Okay, so we're going to be looking at graphs for exponential data here. And this is where sometimes people get a bit confused. They find this kind of tricky. Um, but actually, if you've understood everything up until this point, you're going to be totally fine with this. So why do we need to even do some of this process we're going to be coming across? Well, in science and economics, experimental data often has exponential growth. It's a really common thing. So for example, it could be bacteria in a sample, the population of rabbits, energy produced by earthquakes. It could be Twitter followers over time. Um, it could also be stuff to do with virus spreading, all sorts of stuff, really. So because exponential functions increase rapidly, it tends to look a bit rubbish if we try to draw a suitable graph. So, for example, this graph we're going to look at here, this is for something called Moore's Law, which hypothesized that the processing power of computers would double every two years. Suppose we tried to plot this with computers we sampled over time. Well, each time we're going across a year, in theory, it's going to double. So actually, the next year we go across, it's going to be up here. And the next year, it's going to be all the way up at the top of the page. So what happens is we try to force when we try to force all the data on one graph, we end up making most of the data be close to the horizontal axis. And this isn't very clear because we lose a lot of that information. And it's a lot harder to do mathematical calculations on exponential things. So with this one, when it's doubling, each time it doubles, it's going to get steeper and steeper. So instead, what we do here is we take the log of these numbers and it says, suppose we took the log of the number of transistors on this y axis for each computer. Suppose that the number of transistors one year was y and then it doubled two years later to get 2y. Because That's what Moore's law says, that each um, it's going to double every two years. So two years later, it's going to go from y to 2y. When we take the log of these things, um, y becomes log base 2y and 2y becomes log base 2 2y, which we know with our um, laws, we can split this into a log base 2 of 2 and a log base 2 of y. Log base 2 of 2 is just a 1 here. So what's happened is we've doubled the computing power, the number of transistors, but it has only actually increased by plus one. So the logged value has only increased by a plus one. It hasn't multiplied by anything, it's increased by an addition. Thus taking the log of the values turns exponential growth into linear growth, because each time we would have doubled, we're now just adding one, and the resulting graph is a straight line. So in this previous one, each time we're moving across a dot on this sort of curve, in theory, it's meant to be doubling. This time, each time we move across, it's just going up by one each time. So it takes this exponential curve and it flattens it into a linear graph. And this is used in so many different ways. It's used to do in the energy is to do with earthquakes. So what I've got here, it says because the energy involved in earthquakes decreases exponentially from the epicenter of the earthquake, such energy values recorded from different earthquakes would vary wildly. So there's this exponential idea of earthquakes that means that we get this really big variation in the energy values that are recorded. So you've probably heard of the Richter scale. The Richter scale is actually a logarithmic scale, and it takes the log base 10 of the amplitude of the waves, giving a more even spread of values in a more sensible range. So what I'm saying here is this scale that we've got along here is the energy scale, okay? And you'll see here that between 8 and 9 is a great earthquake that we've got here, whereas just between 10 to the power of 4 and 10 to the power of 5 is what we would call a small one. So this is the true energy scale that we've got along the side, and when we take the log base 10 of all of these, we then get the normal Richter scale, which is a linear scale. Logarithmic linear. So what we get here, the result is an earthquake just one greater on the Richter scale would in fact be 10 times as powerful. Well, that's weird because on this one, we said that when it increased by one, that it represented a doubling. Ah, that's because when this increases by one on the Richter scale, it's going to be a representing a multiplication by 10 because in this question, we were looking at base 10. And in this one, we were looking at base 2. Doubling, multiplying by 10. So let's see where else this might be applied. Now, I mentioned earlier on about the exponential growth that we've seen with COVID figures. So this, these two figures that we've got here, they are the COVID-19 related deaths in the US between 15th of February and the 18th of April 2020. And this one here is the linear. 
and not on the left, but on the top. And then this one down here is the logarithmic one. Now we can tell that this one is linear because each time that we move up this scale on the left hand side, it's going up by 10,000. We can also see that we've got this kind of exponential growth here. We've got this kind of growth of the exponential part of the curve there. And then what you can see in this one is it's logarithmic. I've taken the log of all of these values. So this one is going to be 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3. So if I was going to take logs of all of these, I've just now got 1, 2, 3, 4. What it does when you take the logs of all of these data points that we've got on this orange graph is it's changed it and you can hopefully see that this no longer looks like an exponential but it lo looks a lot closer to a linear kind of scale. So what we do by taking logarithms is we can turn something that's exponential into something that has a straight line graph and straight line graphs we can do loads of different investigations. We can find the gradients, we can find the interceptions, we can do solving equations much more easily as well. You can also do some other kinds of growth. It doesn't just have to be exponentials here. So I've said other non-linear growth. We would also have similar graphing problems if we tried to plot, plot data that followed some polynomial function, such as a quadratic or a cubic. So all of these data points here, they look like they're fitting a y equals 2x cubed kind of curve. But again, we're going to have lots of them kind of squashed down here at the bottom, and suddenly they're going to be shooting up really, really quickly at this place. What we'd like to do is to be able to turn this into some kind of linear graph. So what we're also going to be doing is we're going to look at the process to convert a polynomial graph into a linear one as well. And we're also going to be thinking about how we might turn an exponential graph into a linear one as well. So in my next video, I'm going to do that theory of how do we go from nonlinear growth or exponential growth and turn it into a linear problem so that we can solve many more interesting things about these scenarios.